Have you ever cannonballed into the pool? Whoa! When your body hits the water, you make an explosive splash. Anyone nearby gets soaked. In fact, the force of your impact sends ripples in every direction until they fill the whole pool. When you make waves, you change things. And that's not just true inside the pool. You can make waves everywhere you go instead of a wild jump. You change things with your attitude, with the way you respond to tough situations. You make waves when you invite the kid everyone thinks is different to your birthday party. And when you choose to cheer for your teammates from the bench, even with a sprained ankle. Goal! You make waves when you help two squabbling friends remember the things they love about each other. And when you take a deep breath and smile as your little brother asks you to play the happy little train game for the 24th time. Come on! It's not always easy to choose love, joy, peace, and patience. But with the power of God's spirit, you can dive in and make waves. God's love inside you can change the world around you, and others will see God at work in you. That's why making waves is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Ah! Haley, 
And I don't know about you, but I am so ready for this season. What's your favorite thing to do over the summer? Is it going to the beach? Sand castles and ocean waves. Radical, dude. Or maybe you prefer water skiing on the lake. How about some whitewater rafting? water-related activities to choose from, which is a good thing because all summer long, we're going to be learning how to make waves. Because what you do today can change the world around you. When you make waves, that means you make an impact. See the boat in the water? It's not really moving, is it? But watch what happens when I make a wave. You see that impact? We can make waves too. But our waves aren't made with water. Our waves are made by showing things like joy, patience, or peace. And in today's story, we'll learn a good reason why we should make a big wave of love that will impact the world around us. Here comes a big one! Woo! Radical, dude! I'll see you soon. The Bible. It's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 John, chapter 4, verses 9 through 13. In the beginning there was nothing. Nothing but God. But God's heart was overflowing with love. So God poured it out in a mind-blowing wave of creation. Glorious light, rolling waters, arching sky, furling plants, swooping birds, creeping and racing and climbing animals. Then God reached into the dirt and shaped something brand new, a person. God formed the very first man and breathed life into him. Oh, hello. I feel like I need a something, a name. That's it. God shaped the very first woman too. You can call me Eve. I'm Adam. People were created in God's very own image to reflect God's love to the whole world. But God also created people free to make their own choices. Adam and Eve chose to break the one law God made to keep them safe. They shattered their perfect friendship with God. Sin and brokenness entered the world. Family members turned against each other. It's not fair. Leave me alone. Fear and anger and pain crept in. But God didn't walk away. God's love was bigger than anything else. He already had a plan to bring people back into relationship, to make things right again. And he started by calling one person, Abraham. Abram. Yes, Lord? Go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. Yes, Lord. Though Abraham and his wife Sarah were very old, they had no children, but they followed God for 20 years into the unknown, and at last God gave them a miraculous child, Isaac. God has given laughter to me. Through that one child, Isaac, God's love spread out like a wave, forming an entire nation, the tribes of Israel. The Israelites blew hot and cold, Sometimes they would follow God with all their hearts and oftentimes they would forget. Still filled with deep love, God sent them leaders like Moses. God says, let my people go. And David. The Lord is my shepherd. He gives me everything I need. God made waves through women like Esther and Ruth. Where you go, I'll go. Over and over, God's people promised to obey. And over and over, they turned away. At last, God allowed them to be taken into captivity. But even here, God never left them. 
God sent prophets to speak words of truth, prophets who hinted at a rescuer who would come to save God's people once and for all so they'd never have to be apart from God again. Malachi wrote, Bethlehem Ephrathah, out of you will come for me a ruler over Israel. Zechariah proclaimed, City of Zion, be full of joy. See, your king comes to you. He always does what is right. He has won the victory. Isaiah promised, The people who are now living in darkness will see a great light. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us. His rule will be based on what is fair and right. It will last forever. The Lord's great love will make sure that happens. But following the prophets for hundreds of years, no word from God was recorded. It seemed as if God's love was silent. But the real wave was coming. At exactly the right moment in time, God sent Jesus. God's very own son was born as a baby to an ordinary girl in an ordinary town. Angels declared the news. May glory be given to God in the highest heaven, and may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. Jesus gave the world a picture of what God looks like. He showed what it truly means to love God and to love others. And then he gave up his own life for the sake of his friends, his enemies, for us. Jesus took all our brokenness on himself, and he died. But God's love can never be stopped. God created the greatest wave of all when he raised Jesus back to life. In Jesus, every wrong thing is made right. Every broken piece is made whole. God's love through Jesus comes out in a wave that's not just for a single group of people or any one specific time. God's love floods the earth for all people for all time. John, one of Jesus' closest followers, wrote about it like this. Here's how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world. He sent him so we could receive life through him. Here's what love is. It's not that we loved God. It is that he loved us and sent his son to give his life to pay for our sins. Oh, dear friends, since God loved us this much, we should also love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us. His love is made complete in us. Here's how we know that we are joined to him and he to us. He has given us his Holy Spirit. God's love is flowing all around us right now. And through the power of God's Spirit, we too can spread that bottomless love to the world around us. So here's the good news. God loves you. God loved you enough to send Jesus to the world. And you don't have to do anything to earn that love. In fact, Jesus showed how great his love was by giving his life for your sins. And when you believe in Jesus, not only do you have a relationship with God that lasts forever, but God gives you the Holy Spirit to help you through life. If God loves you that much, you can make waves by showing love to others. Think of it this way. This is God. God pours his love into you. Then you can take that love and pour it into other people. John wrote, no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us. Maybe that means that other people can see God through us when we show them love. But love doesn't have to be a tidal wave. Something that seems small can have a huge impact. You can love someone by helping them without being asked. You can love someone by giving up your turn. Sometimes all you have to do to show love is just spend time with someone. When you choose to love people the way God loves you, you can make waves. And you may not see it, but you can bet that love will spread from you to other people to even more people. So 
here's the one thing to remember today. Love others because God loves you. You could change the world one person at a time. <sighs> Why am I so thirsty right now? Have you ever cannonballed into the pool? Whoa! When your body hits the water, you make an explosive splash. Anyone nearby, get soaked. In fact, the force of your impact sends ripples in every direction until they fill the whole pool. When you make waves, you change things. And that's not just true inside the pool. You can make waves everywhere you go instead of a wild jump. Whee! You change things with your attitude, with the way you respond to tough situations. You make waves when you invite the kid everyone thinks is different to your birthday party. And when you choose to cheer for your teammates from the bench, even with a sprained ankle. Goal! You make waves when you help two squabbling friends remember the things they love about each other. And when you take a deep breath and smile as your little brother asks you to play the happy little train game for the 24th time, come on! It's not always easy to choose love, joy, peace, and patience. But with the power of God's spirit, you can dive in and make waves. God's love inside you can change the world around you and others will see God at work in you. That's why making waves is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Ah!
Hey, buddy. You ready to... Wow. Yeah, I'm almost ready. I just, I'm just finishing up the sunscreen. You think you got enough? <laughs> I, I thought so. Do you think I need more? No, you're good. No, oh, okay. I just gotta get... Oh, <laughs> I get this hand. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So, oh, oops. <laughs> Gotta get this hand. It's a little slippery. Wait, 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 wait. You want me to help um, you? Yeah. Out there? Do you, here. Oh, yeah, okay, do you okay, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Oops. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. All right. Here we go. All right. Here you go. <laughs> all right. I'm ready. Uh, I'm, you want me to carry something? Uh, yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. Yeah. Here, take this. Okay, yeah. Oh. Oops. Here you go. Great. Sorry. Oh, well, that's... Sorry. I, no, it's all right. I, re I got this one. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. It's, my hands are slippery. I, I have no shot. You know what? I think I can handle it. Yeah. All right, so we're we're leaving. Yeah. Let's All go. Right. Great. Look. Oh. Did you put sunscreen on the bottom of your feet? Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And welcome to the. the Show. Show. Tell them what month it is, John. Oh, it's June. That's right. And John loves June. June. John, June. June, John, Junie, Johnny. Johnny, June. It's June. Yow! Whoa there. What? Too much? Yeah. Okay. But seriously, I do love June. Uh, Summer is definitely here. Beach, catching the waves, uh -huh. pool parties. Playing in sprinklers. All great things, but yeah. you know what I love about summer? What? Well, here in America, we call it our national pastime. Hot dog eating contest! No. Pizza eating contest! Still, no. Our okay. national pastime. Pie eating contest. No, it has nothing to do with food. Baseball! Baseball is our national pastime? Yes, and here to talk about it is someone who knows stuff. Yeah! Hey, come on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Take a seat. Uh, who are you and what do you know? Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> yeah, my name is uh, Jerry. I'm a baseball umpire. Oh, well, hey. Hey. What? Hey. <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. Uh, but you didn't even do anything. Well, it's a pretty unlovable job. Huh. And who is that person dressed up like a llama who came in here? That's, uh, that's Lorenzo. He's the mascot. It's kind oh. of rude. Well, he just keeps the fans laughing, uh, even if it's, you know, sometimes at my expense. It's all in good fun. Huh. Yeah, but it still must be hard to get booed all the time. Well, sure. I mean, okay, here's the deal. If I make a good call, it never gets noticed. But if I make a bad call or even a close call that maybe doesn't go your team's way, well, then some people can be... Well, they could say some pretty mean things. Like what? Yeah, well, just watch this. <clears throat> uh -huh. Strike three! Yeah! Hey, yo! I've got better calls for a telemarketer! Hey! <laughs> okay, 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 okay. No, that's, that's, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> So, so if people can be so mean to you, why do you want to be an umpire? Well, I, I love the game. I mean, I love the players. I love the fans. I, I even love Lorenzo. Lorenzo? Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Oh. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, yeah. This guy. Oh, what a guy. Oh, well, yeah. I have to admit, Jerry, you have an incredible attitude about this. Yeah, I don't know if I could do it. Yeah, I don't need. Whoa. Go. You're out of here! What? I call him like I, I call him like I see him, Lorenzo. What, what? What are you? Are you kidding? You were out by a mile. What are you doing? What? What? Uh, glasses? I don't. 
don't need glasses! Well, yes, I do need glasses because I'm wearing them right now because without them, I can't see anything. Plenty of people need glasses. That's why I can see you are out because I'm wearing glasses. What? Uh, oh, I'm not crying. I'm not crying. No, I'm not crying at all. I'm not crying. <laughs> I'm not crying. Man, how do you do it? Uh, I, I, I think it's important to remember that everyone at the game plays a part, mm -hmm. right? I mean, like, uh, the, the popcorn seller's there to keep the fans fed. The players are there to compete, to entertain. The fans are there to cheer, to have fun, and to see some amazing plays. Mm -hmm. And I'm there to make sure the game is played fair. I mean, deep down, I think that's really what everyone wants. We all play a part to show how much we care about the game mm -hmm. and about each other. <laughs> it, it's kind of like the wave, right? If if only a handful of people did it, it would just be, well, it would just be random people standing up and down. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the demonstration, uh, Lorenzo. <laughs> but but when everyone plays a part, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go for it, yeah, yeah, yeah. go for it. Whoa! It makes something pretty cool. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know what? Thanks for coming on the show today, Jerry. Of course. Hey, uh, um, oh, wait. Um, so right here. Hey, I've got a couple tickets to the game later if you oh, guys wow. want to go. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Yeah. You bet. Your thing. Hey, take care. All right, bye. bye. He's out of here. He is. <laughs> what? What? No, no. He literally left. He's gone. He's really out of here. Don't do that. That's my ad. What are you? I, I, he, we're not even playing a game right now. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Why, why are you kicking dirt? This is a wood floor. Kellen. What is up, good people? Not much. You got a story for us today? Absolutely. Well, then take it away. Our story today comes from 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 through 13. And it tells us a little bit about God's love. But really, the story starts way before that, near the beginning. God created the world and it was good. But something happened between God and humans that separated us. People broke God's rules. Now, thankfully, God had a plan to fix that broken relationship. God did that by sending us Jesus. And that's what John was writing about. He wrote, here is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world. He sent him so we could receive life through him. Here is what love is. It is not that we loved God. It is that he loved us and sent his son to give his life to pay for our sins. That, my friends, is something to cheer about. And to demonstrate that, here are my good friends, Jackie and Dee Dee, the cheer squad. Hey, Kellen. You ready, Dee Dee? Oh, I'm ready. Oh, I got a question for you. Okay, what's that? Do you know how much God loves us? Oh, it's so much. We know, we know our God, our God loves us like what? Our door, our door to God, to God, will never be shut. We know, we know, our God, our God, gave us the one. His one and only, only, one and only son. Woo! Yeah! God gave us his one and only son, Jesus, who gave his life to bring us back to God. When we trust in Jesus, we can have a relationship with God that lasts forever. That's how much God loves us. But listen to what John wrote next. Dear friends, since God loved us this much, we should also love one another. You ladies got a cheer for that? Huh? Oh, yeah. You know we do, Kellen. Hey, Jackie. What's that, Dee Dee? You know, just sometimes it's hard to care for others. Oh, what are we going to do about that? Jackie, you already know. L-O-V-E, that's what we must do. Because of what God's done, we should love you too. L-O-V-E, that's what we must do. When we love each other, our hearts are made new. L-O-V-E, that's right, the word is love. We can show the world we care just like the Lord above. L-O-V-E. That's what we must do. 
us do. Because of what God has done, we should love you too. I love that. If God loved us so much by giving us Jesus, then we can find a way to love one another. Here's the last part. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us. His love is made complete in us. Here's how we know that we are joined to him and he to us. He has given us his Holy Spirit. John wrote that no one has ever seen God. But when God's spirit lives in us, we're able to show God's love to others. What you got for that cheer squad? We got something really good, Kellen. You tell him, sis. You ready to bring this home, Dee Dee? Oh, I thought you never asked. Let's do this. It's true God's spirit reminds you and me. God lives inside us, setting us free. It's true God's spirit reminds you and me when we love one another, God's love is complete. When God sent Jesus, his love came to stay. Now his spirit helps us to love the same way. It's true God's spirit reminds you and me when we love one another, God's love is complete. Woo! Amazing. Thanks, cheer squad. Yeah, thanks. That was great. One big way God showed his love for us was by sending Jesus. And that's why we get to show God's love when we care for others. And the more we show God's love, the more his love will spread, creating a wave of love. Whoa! (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Kellen. See you next time. Wouldn't miss it. Later. You know, love is an easy thing to talk about. Oh, yeah. I I say I love a lot of things, like uh, pizza and my Dryerland collection and soccer. But what does it mean to really love others? Uh, Well, I think God gave us a pretty good example, so reveal the question. Hmm. How can you love others like God does? Yes. Ah, uh, that's that's good and uh, tough, but yeah, good. Yeah, because God is he's God. <laughs> yeah. He's... Uh, oh, but, but, but remember, we have God's Spirit living inside us. Yeah, and the Holy Spirit can help us to love like God. Right, right, right. You, you can love someone by doing something kind for them. Yeah, you can love someone by giving up something that you want. You can show love to people who are different from you or even people who maybe get on your nerves a little bit. Yeah, talk about it together. How can you love others like God? Hey, that's all the time we have for today. Oh, that's right, because we we have to get to the baseball game. That's right. We're going to go cheer on Jerry the umpire. So we'll see you next time on the So It's O Show. Whoa. Whoa. That was a reverse (laughs) wave. Uh, That was crazy. We were going that way. Uh, Okay. Oh, I mean, yeah. Boy, Another I mean, great call, Jerry. Was way beyond the base. No. After the ball. I'm supposed to be kind of oh, that's right. Hey, good effort. Yeah. You know what? The one thing I know about baseball fans is they just like effort, not accuracy. You know what's foul? These prices for popcorn, but, yeah. but not your calls. Yeah, and the pigeons on the third deck. They're foul.